Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got in front of me today is one of the samples from the Harbingers of Darkness, which are the Siege of Vosphorax Part 2 release from Quartermaster 3D. Now you might recall me having done the Imperial Trench Runners a little while ago. These are the bad guy versions of them, and they're currently on Kickstarter. This fella is a 3D print. He's come off of my Elegoo Mars 3, and I'll make sure that the links for where you can pick these guys up are in the description. Now, you will be able to pick these up after the Kickstarter campaign has ended on my mini factory, and there is a huge variety of miniatures to go and check out from Quartermaster 3D there as well. So without a lot of mucking around, we're going to get straight into it today. I'm going to pop all of the paints in the description below as usual. Let's get started. So once you've gone ahead and cleaned up your miniature, got them all assembled, the first thing to do is to prime them. Now I've used here matte black from the Army Painter, but the black is 100% not going to matter. You can use any primer you like here. Black is just going to be the easiest, and it doesn't need to be any specific brand. Black is black. The very first painting step that we're going to do is to get some Mornfang Brown. Uh, now, likewise with the black, it doesn't matter too much if this isn't a specific brown. What we're introducing is a bit of warmth and some, some shading to our black. And then we're going to add quite a bit of water. We want to thin this down, well, maybe six or seven drops. Uh, the exact ratio doesn't matter too much. We just want this to be uh, not quite a shade. So you'll see that's pretty thin. And then, and I guarantee you this is going to look terrible, we're going to apply this over the entire miniature. So using it kind of like a wash. Now the purpose behind this is that we're going to get this neat grubby recess shading because I want this fella to look like he's been in the field for a while. And I want his gear to have a slightly dusty, grimy appearance to it. Now why not just do this with a brown primer? Well, the short answer is... I want a slightly darker finish overall, so actually starting from black is still going to give us that. And uh, this also gives us the opportunity to introduce a little bit of depth, even this early on in the painting process. So you can use a huge brush if you want for this. And uh, because this is quite thin, you don't have to worry about it overpowering any details. Just make sure that you're getting it into all of the recesses. Now once that's had plenty of time to dry, you really do not want to try and paint over this while it's not yet yeah, still wet. Will not work, but you'll end up with something like this. And you'll see here, this is why it's not simply a brown primer, because we've got that neat, grimy sort of primed look to it. And our paint was thin enough that we haven't obscured any details. So that's just magnificent. I'm quite happy with that. Now thinking about colors for this guy, let's take a look. This is one of the uh, Imperial, the uh, quote-unquote good guys versions, and you'll see I've done uh, sort of a greenish, lots of greens and beiges and browns. So for my bad guy versions, what I want to do is look into maybe some beiges and reds just to flip the palette so that these guys will look quite different to the Imperial Trench Runners from the other side. So the first color that I am going to turn to is going to be Zandri Dust still. Now, starting from the very lowest layer of his clothing, he's got like a tabard thing hanging off of his belt. He's also got trousers, and uh, I'm not too worried if I do hit the chain or his uh, knees and what have you. And his sleeves are also tucked in here. So I want the basic gear that he's wearing to be quite similar uh, to the trench runners. Now that won't take long to do. Uh, I found two coats in most areas were sufficient, and there's not really a huge amount of his undersuit. Now you could choose to do this a brighter red, like I'm about to, uh, but I like how that looks. We're looking for fairly generic. And speaking of generic, I'm going to use here Mephiston Red, uh, because to my mind, red is one of those little cinematic shorthand things for red guys as bad guys. So these padded... Uh, sort of quilted sections on his hips. I'm going to paint them in with a couple of coats of this. You could use corn red, but because we are going to shade this quite heavily in a later step, I think that's going to make those super dark, and it will be a little difficult to see them at table distance. So I'm going to use 
Mephiston Red instead. Now there isn't really a huge amount of red on these dudes. Uh, it is up to you, of course, how much you want to add. I think I might do something with his helmet a little bit later on. What I'm going to turn to now is Mournfang Brown again, uh, because there are these little sections on his waist which look kind of like more padded leather. Uh, as well, I'm going to use this to paint in his belt, with a little bit less on my brush, and I'll also do his gloves in this too. Now, as well as the uh, boots and the tabard bits, I've also done his gloves, the little straps holding on his armor, and up underneath the, uh, the mask there, you can't see it very well, but I've done that as well. And now we're ready to go and add some metallics. So what I have is Lead Belcher, because I want a really deep, moody looking finish to this dude. So any chains, I'm going to paint this obviously with Lead Belcher. Um, I'm trying to decide honestly if I do want to do much of his weapon with this. I don't think I do. I like the, uh, the darker, grimy, metallic finish to them. So just a couple of little details will be in a lead belcher there. Uh, let's see what I come up with when I'm finished. Now, as you'll see, I haven't really done a huge amount of metallic stuff. I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. Now I'm going to paint over his armor with a contrast color. And I'm going to use here Black Templar. Black Legion will cover very, very well, almost like an ordinary black paint. So I want a little bit of translucency here. Now, if you're trying this yourself and you're not sure you're going to like how it looks, start somewhere that you can very easily cover over if you have to. So I'm going to start by applying this to his rifle. You'll see straight away, yeah, that's cool. We're going to end up with a slightly grimy finish when this dries. So I'm going to cover this over, I'm going to let this dry, and if I like how it looks, I'll then paint his armor in the same way. Now that's looking pretty good. That's very close to what I wanted. Uh, you can still see a little bit of the brownish tint still showing through. Uh, but what I'm going to do is experiment while I'm here, and I'm going to add a great big dollop of contrast medium to a little bit of that Black Templar. Roughly half and half. Because what I want to see is what happens if I get an uneven finish. I don't want a pure black over everything. And the bonus here as well is if there's anywhere that I do want to come back and darken down some more, I can just do a second coat of this. So very quickly just blast in over areas which I want to be black with my contrast mix. Now that's way closer to what I had in mind. You'll see it's still black, uh, but especially up on the shoulder pads, if I flick them around this way, you can see a little bit of that grimy brown underneath. That's just perfect. What I have now, this is Retributor Armor, and I'm going to go over areas that I want to be a brassy, sort of bronze finish. Now we're going to shade this quite heavily, so though it's going to look gold going on, don't worry too much. Now what we're going to do is to actually highlight the metal before we shade. And this might seem a little back to front, but trust me, it's going to make perfect sense. What I have is some Necron compound, and I'm using one of my little makeup brushes here as my dry brush. It doesn't need to be anything specific though, just as long as you're not leaving very much behind at all. Now, starting from his backpack is probably a good place to get an idea of what you'll leave behind. Just very lightly flicking along the edges, just to pick up some of the detail. And then when you're confident about what you're leaving behind, you can quite roughly and a little haphazardly just catch some of the black details that you want to have a buffed metallic edge. Now it might surprise you, but you want to be a little bit more generous with that than you might think. Uh, particularly on his legs here, you'll see up on his uh, knee pad, I've got quite a bit there. And I want a kind of sandblasted finish to the armor. So looking there and at his backpack, you'll see we've got a nice sharp edge. But now we're going to add just a little bit more. What I'm using, this is steel from the Vallejo Model Airline. And you could instead here use something like uh, Stormhost Silver. But what I'm going to do is just use tiny little bits of this to add a little bit more detail and definition to some of the areas that I want uh, proper scratches to show up. So especially up on the edges of the shoulder pads, uh, anywhere that you really want a big clean mark, uh, just little dibs and dabs of this. Don't worry too much if you can't paint a straight line, because honestly, 
we're not painting straight lines. The beautiful thing here too is you can also use this on the gold. Now by adding those little dings and scratches over the dry brush, we get quite a lot of volume to that black, and that's going to look really cool when we shade it. The last real consideration is what we're going to do with the face mask, and I'm going to use Carrack Stone, uh, mostly because I like quite a light mask. Uh, you could use this as an area to add a bit more red to the miniature, uh, but it is really up to you. And there we go. Now the face mask you might want to do a little more bone color, in which case something like Xandri dust with a little bit of Morgas bone or even Ushapti bone over top will work a bit better, but I like this finish. Now to shade him, I am going to use Agrax Earthshade, and this is the new stuff. If you want this to behave like the older stuff did, all you need to do is add a little bit of Lamian Medium to the pot, uh, but this is going to work perfectly well for what I've got in mind. So go ahead and over the entire miniature, make sure you're working this into the recesses, plenty of shading there, and a little bit of warmth to the miniature. And once he's dry, you'll have something that's nice and moody like this. Now the trouble with the new formulation of the shades is they do tend to dry just a little bit shiny. Um, it's not ordinarily a huge issue because I varnish all of my stuff anyway. Um, it is a recommendation I make all the same, but if you don't and you don't like the shiny finish, you might try the Vallejo Game Color Umber Wash instead there because it dries really matte. What I am going to do, you can see there's a couple of spots where things have gone a little bit awry. Let's go back with some of my Xandri dust and just tidy up little areas where I want a smoother finish than what the shade has given me. So I can use this to brighten up any areas that have ended up darker than I would like. There isn't really very much to do for that. Uh, what I'm going to do next, like I said, is an optional step, uh, but this is going to be Ushapti Bone just to pick out some of the edges of those areas of detail. So in this way, we tidy up our recesses and get a little bit more volume to our cloth. Now I'll use a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet to do the same thing to the red, and this will probably show up slightly better on camera. Now for those leather details that you might want to highlight, a little bit of Scrag Brown will do the job. Just a little touch of this on the back of Knuckles uh, at the edges of where the leather is meeting equipment, and so forth. And now from here, that's pretty much done. But what I am going to do is go back to some of that Mournfang brown we used earlier, I mixed up some fresh stuff, and watered it down in the same way as we did to make our initial wash. What I'll do then is pick some areas where I want rust and grime to have settled, and I'll just add a little bit of that straight from the brush, now, in particular, try and avoid the weapon with this, because he'd probably take slightly better care of it than, uh, <laughs> than that would imply. Unfortunately, this doesn't show up terribly well uh, when that shade is still so shiny. So once we've finished and I've varnished this, I think this is going to be a little bit more impressive. And once that is dried, that's going to be quite subtle in some of those recesses, but still overpowered by the shine of that shade. So here comes the varnish. I'm using Instar's Varnish Plus. Uh, you could take him outside and hit him with a spray, but because the weather's not really uh, perfect for it, I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to use my brush on here. So making sure that I'm not getting any big pools of it, let's go over the entire miniature and give him a nice matte varnish. Then, as if by magic, doesn't that look like a whole world better? What I'm going to do now is to pop a base on him, and I'm going to base him in the same way as I did the other fellas, the Imperial Trenchers, because I want them to match and to look like they're taking part in the same sort of conflict. Uh, I'm really pleased with how that turned out. The varnish in particular over the brassy bits? Mmm, molto bene. Okay, anyhow, let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all finished. And there at last, our Harbinger Grenadier is complete. Now, I happen to know that the sculptor quite likes doing things which are fun to paint, but can be done very quickly. But they still have plenty of detail where if you wanted to, you could really spend a lot of time going to town on them. I think this fella's armor is really emblematic of that. 
you could paint all sorts of colors on there. You could be doing stripes and patterns and what have you. But as far as getting this dude done really quickly, uh, just a couple of washes, a little bit of contrast, and then some grime. And that was really all it took. You could even skip a few of those steps and still get a pretty decent result on the table. So I've had a lot of fun painting them. I always do with the Quartermaster 3D stuff. So thanks again to them for sending them along so I can have a play with them. As well, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment and all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers Ella Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Rod, Jimmy and Andrew. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.